Okay, so uh, good evening, everyone. My name's Ian Baverstock. I'm going to talk for a bit less time about the Guildford cluster and about the Guildford games industry. That's, that's what we're all here for. I assume that's what we're all part of, and I recognise many of these faces. I think it's important to just talk about ourselves. We're an isolated little cluster, suddenly cut off from a big wide world around us, suddenly alone in the world with our big enemies breathing down our necks. That's Leamington Spa, Brighton, and of course London, <coughs> not forgetting Dundee. Now seriously, we are a little bit separate from everyone else um, in the way the UK works. I know that because I've been making games around the Guildford area since about 1985. Yes, I really am that old. So I think before I make a few comments about the industry around here, some of which are slightly critical, hopefully some cause for thought, I think it's probably worth just explaining where I've come from so you get some of the context. So my background is as an engineer and then as a programmer, and I started off making really, really expensive video games for very small numbers of people to play. They were flight simulators, used to make them up at British Aerospace, at what is now the Top Gear test track, and they were played by a few test pilots at a time. Uh, they were great fun. The taxpayer paid millions for them, and you could sit there for hours afterwards. You sometimes had a moving base and you know, all sorts of special cockpit displays. It was like the best video game you could ever play. And that's what I used to do. And while Peter was making bullfrog, uh, making growing bullfrog and making populous, which we were all playing in our spare time, we were playing flight sim games against people who used to actually fly these things for a living and occasionally actually go and launch missiles at people, which is all quite interesting. So we did that for a while, left British Aerospace, set up a company here in Guildford, actually just up the road from here, called Simis, and it was a flight sim company. And for those of you that remember the, the games industry in those days, you know, we were sort of making 32-bit PC flight sims at a time when everyone else was making sort of uh, um, arcade knockoffs and Atari games and Amiga games. So it was a nice place to be. We were in a nice, unique position. And we did that for a few years, and the company was bought by our major customer. So we went from four people to about 35 people in the space of a few years, sold the company. We then diversified, uh, changed its name, Pluto Entertainment, for those of you that, that know that name, you're much more likely to know that name than Simis. We diversified the company at that point, started making console games, much wider view of the industry as an entertainment industry, not a tech industry. And I think that's the first thing I want to say. My background is tech, but it's very definitely now an entertainment industry, it always has been. It just took me a while to figure that out. So Kuju grew quite a lot, finished up as a six studios across the world, one here, one in London, and I'll come back to that point. Um, I think over the years, I've employed about 1,200 people. Some of them are in the room. It's very lovely to see their faces and to see that they're still willing to shake hands with me and talk to me, even <laughs> though that's, that's the history. So that grew a lot, and it was a very interesting time through the industry with the base here, with consoles especially being the driving force, being one of large numbers of people in often quite large companies. During that time as well, I was one of the founders of Tiger, which is the other trade association, sorry, Joe. Um, but more interestingly, I was also part of an organization called the Southeast Media Network. So that doesn't exist anymore. It was a regional support organization funded by the government to try and build the media industries in the Southeast. And this is me starting to look beyond the games industry and realizing there's a big wide world out there. Now, the Southeast Media Network, very interesting. It had the entire media industry for the southeast of England outside of London as its remit. It had a budget of 90,000 quid. I used to go and do work with the equivalent organization in the northeast. They had millions of pounds to spend just on games. We should be under no illusions. This part of the world does not get any particular favors, support, or attention from government and from sort of the, the rest of the world. We have to actually earn our way always. We always have to make our own path. So as well as doing those things, since selling Kuju for the second time, which was quite a nice thing to do, um, I've set up various startups. Um, I've founded a publisher, which is Chilled Mouse, and there's only two of us in it. The other person is in the room, and with the mouse team, there's just two of us. It's lovely having a small company like that. We've got a VR startup around here, and I've been involved in various other sort of investment ventures. And I'm also on the board of a thing called the Digital Catapult, which many of you won't know about, but is actually one of the associate members of the 5G Center. And again, 
you're seeing throughout the sort of tech world a constant demand, and in government as well, for the games industry to bring its expertise to other sectors. I'm not sure that's something we should always choose to do, but we are somewhat insular as an industry, and I'm going to come back to this point. We're somewhat insular as a cluster here in Guildford, and I think we need to get over that. People want to know what we've got to say about a lot of things, and it's very important, I think, that we help people move forward in other areas, and that will help grow our business as well. Anyway, to come on to Guildford, this little pool of talent we have here, it's definitely not a little pool of talent. The most important thing, I think, to say, and I'm going to kind of spoil the whole talk, why should we make games in Guildford? The answer is really simple. It's you lot. Right? There's no magic sauce here. It's the people. It's always been the people, right from the very beginning. Why they ended up here, you'd have to ask Peter. You know, we ended up here because of British Aerospace. There were other companies that came here. Uh, Peter Molyneux, that is. You know, there are other companies that came here for other equally random reasons. That doesn't matter. That's history. There's lots of people here. They are fantastic people, and that cluster is really, really important. It's that clustering effect and that networking and that talking to each other which makes all the difference. There are some other nice features about the area. It's got pretty good communications. You know, we've got a reasonably good railway line up to London. It's not very far, so that's good because the trains are very slow. We're quite close to Heathrow and Gatwick. We're quite close to London, but I think that's a double-edged sword. As Joe's already said, lots happens in London which means it doesn't happen here, and it's never going to happen here in the same way it might do in Dundee or Liverpool. Nobody's going to bring their conference to Guildford. Nobody's going to bring their government budget, their other thing to Guildford when they could take it to Dundee or Liverpool or anywhere else like that. So, you know, we've got some nice things about the place. It's a lovely place to live, um, I think. It's a lovely place to live. I've lived here for a lo very long time. There are some local peculiar features. The Research Park is a local peculiar feature. Those guys are great. They've been absolutely fantastic over the years to us. Uh, hats off to them. Wonderful supporters. But really, it is just that clustering effect which is the most important thing. You know, Joe was saying she's a geographer. There's this concept of you put enough companies in one place, people are happy to come to the area because if they don't like the first company, they can go to a second one. The companies talk to each other. The people talk to each other. You as an industry don't just come to events like this and listen to people like me. Half of you will be down the drum and next Thursday and talking to each other in the bar. And that is really, really important. It's incredibly important in an industry that changes as fast as this one does. You can't plan the kind of rates of change that we have had to put up with. You have to be able to do it organically, and you have to be able to do it in a kind of flexible way. And that means people need to know each other. They need to know what else is going on. They need to know what other people are doing. They need to steal their ideas. Maybe they steal their people. There's all sorts of that stuff going on. But the cluster, the cluster goes from strength to strength. And that's really, really important. Okay, so there are some downsides to the area, for sure. As you all know, I'm sure, it's a pretty expensive place to live. That doesn't really help. Nothing much we can do about that. If you want to live in a nice place, it's going to be expensive. I think that's pretty much the way it is. Specifically, though, in terms of the practical considerations for the games industry, especially at this time, startups, I think, are absolutely crucial to that flexibility, that nimbleness, that clustering, actually powering up and working. The startups, I think, are absolutely the key measure, how successful they are, how many of them there are, how quickly they start, how quickly they fail and restart. Those things are crucial measures of how successful this cluster is going to be. And there's one thing that startups in the games industry need, and that, well, two things, actually, cheap offices and lots of bandwidth. Bandwidth is okay. Um, the uh, point about the train station is well made, though. This is the 5G center, and when they get their overseas visitors coming, and they're sat at Guildford train station on the train, and they can't even get a single bit of data. It's not going to be good. So that, I would suggest, should be fixed. But anyway, more generally, it's OK. But the chief offices is an issue. We've got people like Rocket Desk doing a wonderful job. You know, there are, and as I say, the research park in general has been very supportive. But this area needs that chief office flexibility that uh, startups are going to require. And I think there's another aspect to this, which is that startups in this industry can grow very, very quickly. And there's a whole issue with the fact that actually, more generally, um, landlords don't like giving out short-term lets on big properties. And actually, startups, scale-ups often require you know, relatively short terms. So there are some real issues. There's some work being done by the Scale-Up Institute run by Sherry Tutu. If you're interested in those kinds of programs, 
you really ought to talk to them. They've done some fantastic work in some regions where they've talked specifically to local authorities about facilitating scale-ups around things like office space. So you know, I think another aspect of this is Guildford is often not seen as a creative hub, ironically. Um, there isn't a huge sort of artistic pool of talent. We're not like Brighton, right? If you wander down the street to Guildford, it's mostly reasonably well-off people going to Marks and Spencers and Waitrose. If you, if you wander around Brighton, it's lots of very strange-looking people. God knows what they do most of the time, <laughs> right? Who knows who employs them all? But we obviously, as an industry, need those people, right? They are an integral part of our DNA and our lifeblood. We need to be creative. So I'm not quite sure what's gone on there. I don't know whether it is just the clustering effect, whether all those creatives in Guildford are just dressing slightly more soberly or just not going into Guildford. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Okay? We should not get hung up on this because the reality is we are producing fantastic creative games. So we, I think we really don't need to worry about that one. I think people have come to this area sometimes, and I know we used to employ used to interview lots of people who would come out of London and they'd sort of look around Guildford and go, oh, I'm not sure it's really me. Um, but actually, we just shouldn't worry about it, right? We're fine. We're making great games. There are clearly lots of creative people in Guildford doing a wonderful job, and all we need to do is just keep doing that sort of thing, not get too hung up on that. I think the university, when I'm just talking about downsides, historically, the university has not been a great supporter of the games industry. I'm going to say this as somebody who has tried on numerous occasions over those 30 years to engage with the university in terms of its courses, the appropriateness of its computer science course, and so on, and that hasn't gone down well. Now, I know the university is trying to change that, and I know they're much more open to ideas and listening to us, and that's going to come back to us as an industry to engage with them and talk to them. So, historically, not great. Hopefully, that's improving. Right, I need to up the tempo a little bit. Some hidden strengths, though. I think this is where we start to have to look beyond our own industry. First of all, I'm saying Guildford all the time. It's called, you know, this is the Guildford Games event, but I'm regarding Guildford as Guildford, Godalming, which is actually where I've had my offices for most of this, this period, even as far as Farnborough, all the shops, people like Chestology and all the shops. This is one area. We are clearly a distinct geographic cluster, so we should, we should remember, remember to include those guys, not cut anybody out just because they don't have a G1 postcode. Okay, we should also remember that as well as this university, there's... University of the Arts in Farnham, Farm, yeah, Farnham, which is very good. But I think looking outside of our own industry, we should remember that this part of the country is absolutely awash with technology companies. This is a really, really strong IT and software engineering district, whether it's from the aerospace history of Farnborough, the defense industry, all the way along the Thames Valley. This is a phenomenally important part of the country in terms of technology. And the games industry, I think, has done very little to engage with that wider community, which I think is a bit sad. It's a bit odd. Um, you know, I know that people in the industry like to think they're making entertainment and not technology, and that's true. That's absolutely true. But underlying it, we need great engineers, and they've got things they can teach us, as well as things we can definitely teach them. So we need to be slightly careful about that one. But on a broad level, I would say, over time, we have not done a great job of engaging with that wider industry around here. So I come back to it, there is no government support, really, for the games industry in this area. Now, I regard that, actually, as a hidden strength. I look at the work I've done over the years with regionally supported teams, regionally supported grants. A lot of it, as soon as politics changes, just comes unplugged, and it all starts to go horribly wrong. We are phenomenally resilient. We should be really, really proud that we've been making great games here for a long period of time, pretty much unsupported. That, I think, is a great strength, and in these times of sort of turbulence right now, it might be a very important strength. So, just coming on to my message, Peter last year, as I understand it, because I wasn't here, unfortunately, called for us all to be much more supportive of each other, play each other's games, test each other's games, you know, be friends. And I think that's really, really important. This is a very friendly industry. It's full of smart people. They're almost all nice. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully most of you think that about most of us. It's a really nice industry, so that stuff is all good. We should do that, we should carry on doing that. I don't see any evidence that that isn't happening. In fact, I think there is a nice social clustering effect going on as well as everything else. We absolutely need to keep working with people like Yuki. There is no question that if you are not 
members or you're not supporting the trade associations, they can't help you. They don't just need your money, they need your time, they need your input, they need your buy-in. If you're not doing that, then you, know, you can't expect people to help you. Obviously, there's Guild for Developers at Testology have run as well, support that kind of initiative. But ultimately, in terms of Guildford, we need to start thinking, what is actually going to help us? What can we add to this? It doesn't involve central government money, doesn't involve lots of time, because no one's got lots of time. So I think we need to start asking ourselves that question. What do we need to do in this area to keep ourselves on top of the game, to make sure we remain one of the world's preeminent game development clusters? Right, so there are a few things. The first one is, I'm going to come back to those startups. If you are working in a big company or even a medium-sized company and somebody in a startup wants something, try and help because they are absolutely the lifeblood. We all know how fast some of them can grow. You know, those of you that knew Media Molecule when it was two or three people trying to sell rag ragdoll kung fu, now look at it. It's a phenomenal successful story. It can happen really fast. Those companies need help. They need support then they'll just power away. So if anyone needs that kind of help, please help them. I think there's a whole element as well around that creative <laughs> destruction thing that goes on in capitalism. We've just seen here on the research park, a very big, very famous, well-known developer, pretty much fall to pieces, and it's gonna spin off lots of those startups. That, in the end, I think will be a good thing. We just need to make sure we help each other to get through to see the value that can come from all of that little bit of creative destruction. I think I said earlier, the university has not, in my opinion, been the greatest supporter of the, of the games industry, but it's open, as I understand it now, for business that uh, it wants to know more, it wants to know what we want, it wants to hear, uh, hear from us and talk to us. That means we have to talk back. We have to reciprocate as an industry. We have to engage. And I come back to my earlier point. I think the games industry is historically a relatively insular group of people because of history, because of their peculiar mix of technology, arts, and entertainment. Maybe it's just because we all feel like nobody takes us seriously because we don't make movies. I don't know. Whatever it is, we need to get over it. It's not true. We're a massive industry doing amazing work, and when people like the University of Surrey want to actually talk to us, we have a duty, I think, to respond and actually engage with them. So finally, I just want to come on a bit to the, the town, to local government, regional government. Well, there isn't much, by the way, of regional government anymore. Joe touched on this, but here in Guildford, I, you know, I've got kids, teenage kids, and you talk to them about things, and they sit there and they'll play Little Big Planet, and I'll say, well, Mike is familiar with this, obviously, but wider. That was made in Guildford, and they're absolutely stunned. They cannot believe that a game that they play, that they love, was made just up the road in a place where they think of as, you know, where they're going to do some shopping. We, as an industry, should take that as a sign of total failure to engage with our own local environment. We need to actually get over that, and we need to start working with the local government in every way. And it's tricky because, you know, Farnborough is not in the same county as Guildford and so on. So there are definitely some issues for us to overcome there. But we have to get out there and talk to those other representatives of the wider world and get them to work with us and respond to this and pick up on it. And they would love to do it. Most local politicians would love to have a success story like that to shout about. We're not helping them shout about it. So we're actually missing out there because we're not getting the support, the love and the feedback and the general involvement of the wider community that we live in because we're not engaging with it. And I think that's incumbent on all of us to pick that up as a task and go, right, I actually need to talk to other people outside of the games industry about what we do and about how wonderful the things we do in Guildford are in this space. So my biggest criticism, as I said, is I think we're too isolationist. I think we can overcome that quite easily. I think we've got the talent for it. We've certainly got the natural aptitude to do that. We need to be a little bit careful about the fact that people often don't understand our industry. It's still difficult to get that message across, but clearly we should be the right people to do that. So I think overall, we're in a situation where we are in a fantastic place here. We are entirely commercially funded. We're very, very successful. We're doing the right things. We just need to, have to figure out how to turn it up one extra notch to make sure everyone else knows just how successful we are and to make sure we make the most of all of the infrastructure, facilities, and supporters that we could be bringing to bear. Personally, I'm very, very proud to be part of this industry. 
I think it's amazing what we do. We have entertained millions of people around the world. We have made so much happiness and enjoyment for other people. We've also made a lot of money, of course, we shouldn't forget that. It's a very successful industry. We should definitely be proud of all of that. So why is Guildford great for games? Maybe it's history, maybe it's luck. None of that matters. What matters is how we go on keeping it great and how we grow the industry in the area. And my, my call to arms to you all is to look just a little bit outside of our current digital virtual fan base, who all know what's going on, and just engage a bit more with the real world around us, the real institutions of our local environment, and get them to pick up on the fact that we are so damn good. Get them picking up on that and reflect it back to the world in which we live and the local environment in which we live. Okay, those are my points. Thank you very much. Uh, so much doing that again was uh, really fascinating, very passionate uh, speech of conviction. And uh, it's interesting that you know often, as with a lot of businesses, people are part of it, and uh, clearly your resilience in the, in the people in this room. So there's a lot to uh, lot to be very proud about about the uh, community here. Um, are there any questions for Ian before we move on? really encouraging to hear you say that the you know we should be helping others as well and I think you know Guildford has a lot of big studios with a lot of experience especially since the glory days if you like back in the, in the beginning of games coming through but the I'm interested to know for those of us who are me I'm, I am a, a, a very small startup indie developer and I'd love to be able to tap into the rich resources that we have here do you feel that it's there is that support network there, that if there's an approachable community, that there's some way of integrating. You know, you guys have so much experience, and you know, for, for, for guys like me who are just making the mistakes as I go through trying to figure my way through all of this, it would be really great to be able to get to know people. And I don't know whether or not it's a very closed box or it's a very open. I, I think it's open once you start talking to people. I think the difficulty is finding forums for, uh, in which people can talk. So, and that's a mix. I mean, obviously, there's this sort of event, there's Guildford, the Guild for Developers, the Festology Run. I think if you, if you can find people, my universal experience is that everyone will be happy to talk and share and support. Nobody is competitive in the sense of, you know, their game, their idea is something they keep secret. It's an incredibly open industry, which of course makes straight economic sense. In practice, nobody can command more than a tiny, tiny, tiny proportion of the market. So nobody's protecting anything like that. They're all trying to just do a better job. Um, so it's more about finding structures in which people can just meet and share and introduce, in my opinion, and, and obviously then people talking to each other. So more of this is, is precisely what we need locally, in my opinion, in this field. Not to mention the fact that we, we also have, of course, the website, uh, the guildford-games.com website. <coughs> Most of you would have gone to that to register for today, but that's a, a, a way of facilitating My name is uh, Chris Birch. I'm from uh, head up the Anglican Clinic team at Guildford Borough Council, and uh, just want to say that we're you know really committed to the game gaming sector here. Um, we've actually supported both the Rocket Desk and Rocket Jump when it was held here. We're also launching a business development grants program um, from Get Behind Council funding, which um, it's not quite launched yet, but the idea is to support startups, and it's a sort of sector that we obviously need to meet the problem with. But also, we're a property owner in the council, and we are sort of investing in property and. and So we want to support some of the important points you've made and make Guildford a place where the right infrastructure and lobby government for investment in infrastructure and, and housing, etc. So we're, you know, we're, we're one of the people probably mentioned in all the organisations to engage with. Yeah. Well, that would obviously be great. I mean, yeah, I think so I've got my cards. You know, if you want to talk to me about how we can help. 
Yeah, that would be fantastic. I think, I think one of the things to remember about the, the sort of facilities we often need is, you know, as, a, as an industry, we don't have clients come through our door. Okay, so we're not, although we're a very high-tech industry, and clearly we have to have a working environment that people are prepared to put up with, at least, right? <laughs> it's not a working environment where you're bringing some besuited exec from Megacorp in to buy things. We need it to be cheap, we need it to be flexible, we need it to have lots of bandwidth. As long as it's got aircon and a you know, snack machine, it's probably fine. <laughs> just to say, we're just put on that point, we're also looking at potentially uh, free tempered Wi Fi using concession models and things like that to get better bandwidth um, right across the town centre area. That's another project we're looking at. So, numbers are constrained, but we're very happy to support the number of people. All very encouraging. Any other questions? Last question. Well, I, I think I'm not sure we've done a very good job, so I'm not sure we'd be a good good example to follow, frankly. I mean, I think our involvement with the university has been, is, is, you know, it's definitely improving, but we've been here making games, lots of games, on an enormous scale for a long, long time. And, you know, it's now starting to be something that I think is, <coughs> is a, a relationship of, of merit. So I don't think you could sit there and go, we had a plan. We didn't. You know, games came to Guildford fairly randomly, I think that's fair to say. Um, We've done a great job because I think we've been just left alone and very cre clever, very creative, but also very commercial. We've made money because there was no other way of doing it. I sometimes think that the level of government support in places like Northern Ireland is often a little bit more of a hindrance than a help. You know, it's very difficult to refuse free money, I know that. But it comes with you know, all sorts of diverting things that mean you have to talk to other people who aren't your customers, you have to meet priorities which aren't necessarily your business priorities. And those sorts of things you need to be very careful about. We haven't had any of that here. People have just had to make money and get on with it. And I think sometimes that's a good discipline. Sorry, I sound like a ruthless capitalist bastard right now. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Sorry. Especially with the previous comment about the state of the offices, no one's going to want to talk yeah. to me after this. I wouldn't mind just, just making a comment on behalf of the university, actually, because I think we, we do acknowledge that, uh, you know, in the past, uh, there hasn't been so much engagement with the games industry. Um, a actually, we've been engaged in research here in the broader creative industries for, for at least 10 or 15 years, but mainly with the movie and broadcast industry, not so much the games. And, uh, You're going to have to build that one. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, uh, yeah, I think things are changing, though. As I say, we've kicked off a few, few projects with, with the industry just in the last 12 months. And um, I mentioned the digital media arts program. We're placing people in, in the local industry. In February, we had a, a, a great networking event here uh, where we had some po very positive feedback from the industry in terms of how they could connect with us and our graduates, and there's a sort of interest there. So I, I don't want to say too much about it, uh, just to remind people, part of that engagement, we're, we're consulting on some new programs there in the foyer, and we're, people just post it note and stick to their, their feedback on those. Uh, you know, very valuable to us uh, if, if people do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, everyone.